I'm going to tell you a story all about a wheel tapper who won a lot of money in a football sweep. He went up in the world in consequence and he got rather mixed up with the English language. And here we go, walking up and down the railway lines. Now I haven't always been dressed up as posh as I am now. As some might say, I'm dressed up to the names. For well, six months ago I worked quite hard at tapping railway wells and walking up and down of the railway lanes. Now the tapping of a railway well is quite a touchy job and for her wrist and chains one often pays. But it's not the tapping railway wells that makes one really tear. It's the walking up and down of the railway lanes. Well, from a passing train one day, a football coupon fell. A coloured sheet with funny square designs. So I thought I'd win some cash and throw my MR to the winds and stop walking up and down of the railway lanes. Well, I got so interested in the one, two, eeks, 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 and the filling in the sevens and heats and names, that I nearly got the Scotch Express between my shoulder blades, which would have spread me up and down of the railway lanes. Now, my better half, she'd never hold with gambling like this here. If I hoover spend a florin, she just wanes. So I says to her, you silly... Girl, you go and tap some wells and try walking up and down of the railway lanes. But when I learnt one Saturday I'd really won a packet, I does the hoony thing, I just resigns. And I sees the station master and says, You can keep your hammer and the same her place the whole of the railway lanes. Well, the station was so very small. It left him all alone, so I takes him out and we whines and dines and wanes. And it appears he fell so ill next day, he tried to tap some wells while they was running up and down of the railway lanes. So now the station's closed and hey, just live a life of ease, but if ever for a change my soul it pains. I climb up in the signal box and listen to the whistles. <coughs> while the trains run up and down of the railway lanes. Here, you can talk about your Air Force in their blue and red machines. You can talk about the Navy and the Army and Marines, and I know they're worth the glory that showered on them too. And I know they do it properly when they've got a job to do, but I got a special hero, eh? And I'll bet you can't get who. Well, I'll tell you, it's my brother in the lifeguards. And he don't half look a dandy when he's sitting on his horse. You see, the lifeguards, they ain't mechanised, so he's got an horse, of course. And underneath the horse's saddle, there's a kind of sheepskin rug. And he sits up there all stiff and straight and he don't half look smug. And his helmet comes so low in front, you can hardly see his mug. He looks as creamy do my brother in the lifeguards. His Christian name is Sidney. And he ain't half a Sid. He run away to join the lifeguards, yes. No, straight he did. And he's really very comical. He's full of fun and charm. If there's any funny pranks about, you can bet Sid's there, not half. You know, when he comes on leaf on Sundays, go in half and make us laugh. He do no straight he do, my brother in the lifeguards. He rides a mare called Edna. Now there's a funny name. And she's all jet black all over and she's sweet and nice and tame. And he curry combs and brushes her, well more times than enough. And feeds her sweets and carrots and all that kind of stuff. I think he'd take her to the pictures if the seats was big enough. He would, though, straight he would, my brother in the lifeguards. He said he didn't all feel nervous the first time on Century Go. It was in that street they called Whitehall, in them all suches. Well, you know. And I expect you do feel jumpy the first time on guard, I suppose. 
and Edna, she wasn't used to him, she kept hopping on her toes, and then she jerked the rein so much, his helmet cut his nose, he didn't like that much, my brother in the lifeguards. When he come off guard, the sergeant says, Where'd you get that bleeding nose? <laughs> and she, she wouldn't let Edna down, said, Well, I banged it, I suppose. Said the sergeant, said the ring, Rose, you're really very slack. There's a remedy for that complaint, a good old-fashioned knack. Well, how could he take his breastplate off and shove it down his back? He's no contortionist, my brother in the lifeguards. Oh, well, I think I've told you quite enough about my brother, Sid. I could go on talking all day long, but you'd get fed up if I did. Only if ever you go down Whitehall and you've got some time to spare and you see two blokes on horseback on the right from Trafalgar Square and one of them's got a shiny nose and he's on a jet black mare, well, that's Edna and my brother in the lifeguard.